Hello everyone, today I'm going to be talking to you all about cryptography. So suppose you want to send some message from Alice to Bob containing the data, hello world. So as we're well aware by now, uh, we've got this situation in which we might have to send that data, in fact, through some third party, in this case, Mallory. And that might be the case due to some malicious actor, if Mallory was a malicious actor sitting on the network and forcing that data to come towards Mallory in order to in intercept it, to manipulate it, etc. Or it just might be a result of sending data through the internet, where we have to route data along a series of several host nodes, right? We, we route from Alice to Bob, but we have to go from this host to this host to this host to this host until that data finally makes it to its target recipient. At some point, you're going to likely deal with the problem of communication potentially passing through some third party. Okay, so cryptography deals with the problem of is securing a lot of properties related to this communication. So the first one that we're going to be investigating is confidentiality. So when I send data from Alice to Bob by way of Mallory, we would like to have this guarantee of Mallory not knowing necessarily what this data is. So we can imagine, right, if this data must pass through Mallory, right, Mallory is forwarding the data along to Bob, that means Mallory has the capability of inspecting this data, of capturing it, of keeping it, right? If we're sending data along this wire and it's passing through Mallory, Mallory now has access to that data. And depending on the application, that might be an issue. So for example, if you're um, logging into your bank account, you must at some point supply your username and password. Um, and if that is just being sent straight as is, Mallory now is able to capture that banking information and you know, can do whatever Mallory wishes to do with it in the future. Um, now, normally you might say you have some guarantees. Let's imagine, right, we're talking from Alice to Bob, and maybe we assume no malicious actor, right? We're just operating on the internet, and the data is just going to pass through a bunch of ISPs and internet traffic companies, and we maybe assume that they're not going to do anything malicious, and it's totally fine, and we can be, we can feel some level of confidence, but Generally, it's, it's not a good idea, necessarily, to put that level of trust into a situation when that is not strictly required, right? If we could somehow guarantee this confidentiality, why not apply confidentiality to that data? Why not allow that data to remain confidential unless you are Alice or Bob uh, within this communication channel? And the cryptography allows us to start making guarantees about properties like confidentiality. The next property that we are going to look at is integrity. So when Alice is sending the data to Bob through Mallory, Mallory is ultimately receiving that data and sending that data, right? They're, they're forwarding the data along. But there's no guarantee that Mallory didn't change that data. And there's no way that Bob, under, you know, just doing nothing, making no guarantees, there's no way that Bob would know whether or not Alice had intended to say bye world or maybe had intended to say hello world, right? Bob just has to trust the fact that this is hopefully what Alice intended to send. Well, again, cryptography allows us to start making guarantees about properties like integrity. We can make guarantees that in fact, the message hello world or the message by world was in fact the intended message to be sent. And this integrity property is very important. And cryptography, again, it allows us to make guarantees about this property. The final property that we're going to look at is authenticity. So again, when we're sending data from Alice to Bob, the final node before Bob, let's say, is Mallory or at all of this collection of intermediate nodes between Alice and Bob, let's say that is Mallory, right? We don't necessarily know as Bob whether or not Alice in fact sent us this message. So integrity dealt with whether or not the data was modified or changed in some way. Authenticity deals with the property of, had Alice actually sent Bob this message? What if Mallory is just sending data to Bob and saying, hey, this is from Alice? Look at this data. Alice is sending you this. Here you go. Bob has no way by default, let's say, to know whether or not Alice in fact sent that data because all data must pass through Mallory in this case. 
And we would like to make guarantees that Alice, in fact, had sent that data. And again, cryptography allows us to start making guarantees about the property called authenticity. All of these properties are very useful for communication in this distributed protocol that we call, you know, the internet, where data is flowing through all sorts of machines. We like to make guarantees about these properties. And fortunately, we have cryptography to begin to make those uh, guarantees using, in most cases, or in often cases, uh, a bunch of mathematical tricks, kind of, to uh, make those guarantees.